Hi guys and welcome to the Cape Peninsula Angling Club training videos and welcome to chapter 2. This is where we start putting all the things that you bought together so that one day you'll be able to go fishing. I guarantee you that you will be fishing before we reach chapter 3. <laughs> right, today's episode is uh, t well episode 1 of chapter 2 and we're going to be discussing knots. The first knot I'm going to be showing you is the one that we use to tie our hooks onto our line. But before I do that, I need you to see a little bit of the anatomy of a hook. All hooks that we use have an eye and uh, I'm going to bring this close because you need to see that you will see that this is basically a piece of wire that's been bent to come back in upon itself and because of that you've got a gap right there I'm going to be calling that the lethal gap of doom okay you must at all cost know and be aware of that gap on all of your hooks regardless of how small they are um, that gap is responsible for hooks being cut off of line uh, and uh, you can go and test it yourself <laughs> you can actually cut line with that gap but this is how we tie our hook onto our lines. Um, what I'm going to be show, showing you is what is called a snell knot. Um, oh, I, I hate using technical terminology when teaching people, so for my purposes, this is the hook knot because it's the knot we use to tie hooks with. The hook is pointed away from me the business end is away from you your line you insert through the eye of the hook from the back you take the line you wrap it around your hand and you put it through the eye of the hook again and again from the back there you go keep in mind you have to do it from the back of the hook if you do it from the front you are going to be losing most of your takes and I'm, I'm not joking you will you, you'll be standing next to the water and uh, you'll be scratching your head and wondering why it is that you're losing um, takes and uh, it's going to be, be because you did it from the front of the hook I'm going to show you that again because I really need you to get this. The hook, the front of the hook, away from you. The line enters the eye of the hook from the back. You wrap the line around your hand and you bring it through the eye of the hook again so that you've got a little tail at the front there. Now, this is where that lethal gap of doom becomes very important. As you can see on this hook, it is over there. Now I'm going to start turning this little loop around the shaft of the hook. But really guys, there is no standard to this. Some hooks have them on the left side. Other hooks have them on the right side. So you've got to start this loop on the side that does not have that lethal gap of doom. You have to start it on the side that does not have that lethal gap of doom. So I'm going to be doing it this way around four to eight times depending on the size of your hook and the thickness of your line. And then when you've got that loop set and you've got it um, turned around the hook you take the tail here and you just pull. There you go. You pull. And that is a snelled hook. That is how easy it is. You're done. If you need to see that again, watch this episode again. This, by the way, the hook with the line attached this is what we refer to as a hook link. 
Remember that because I'm going to be using the term hook link in future episodes. The hook with the line attached is called a hook link. Back where you belong. Now I'm going to be showing you the figure of eight knot. It is the knot that we use in order to create a loop in our main shaft of our traces. It is actually remarkably simple. You fold your line double in upon itself. Now with this knot give yourself plenty of space. There are times when trying to save line actually costs you line. And this is one of them. You fold your line double the doubled line you make a loop with there you go You've got a nice little bow tie type thing going there you twist that loop and you bring the front of the double up line through the uh, loop formed by that twist and then you pull um, mountain climbers among you will recognize that knot um, we actually got it from you guys awesome knot by the way <laughs> uh, that is the figure of eight knot I'm going to show you that again again it is the knot that we use to make the loop on the shaft or well, the main shaft of our traces here you go again you double up your line you make a loop with the doubled up line you twist and you put the front section through the hoop formed by that twist you grab it and you pull there you go that's a figure of eight knot now some lines when you make this knot it still slips um, what I've there are very few lines that do that but uh, in my experience what you do then is you apply a simple overhand knot behind your figure of eight knot and an overhand knot is exactly the knot your mother taught you <laughs> right it's just an overhand knot and you put it on behind your figure of eight knot and that will prevent any kind of slippage pull it tight and there you go Again, this is what we use to make our main shafts for our rigs. Um, now is as good an opportunity as any to show you how to do your main shafts rapidly. Um, for certain types of rigs, you're going to be using a 35 to 40 centimeter um, main shaft. For others, you're going to use uh, 60 to 80 centimeters. So here is a way to make your main shafts for your rigs rapidly, especially when you're using the shorter one. You can use an A4 sheet of paper and the knot of your uh, loop to the bottom there, that's how you measure it. That's about 35 centimeters. Right? You grab it. you go through the process of making your figure of eight knot you pull there you go you're done next one you start with a knot at the corner and you put it through on your A4 sheet of paper you diagonally across there you go line loop twist through pull done now with that method you can make ten of these in literally five minutes not even and uh, you end up with what I have here. I'm pretty sure you guys have been wondering what this is all about. These are my main shafts for my various rigs. I keep them ripe and ready. Uh, on a day when I'm feeling particularly industrious, I'll sit down, make 20 or 30, hang them up and leave them there. And uh, obviously, you snip them up from the line that you've been using and uh, there you go
rig shaft after rig shaft in a matter of seconds. By the way, I didn't invent any of this. This is stuff that's been taught to me by other people that are far more knowledgeable than myself but have never had a, the luxury of time and a video camera. The next knot I'm going to be showing you is the swivel knot. I'm calling it that because I don't know what it's really called and it is the knot that we use to um, tie swivels with. You tie your swivel onto a line with. Um, for the purposes of this exercise I need to perform a little bit of magic. Okay, regardless of what you see now, because of my magical abilities, this is now a swivel. Okay, I know you it looks like something else, but really it's a swivel. <sighs> your swivel, take your line, through the swivel, you turn it upon itself four or five times. take the line you put it through this little loop that's formed at the bottom here next to your swivel there you go it goes through there and you'll see the twisted section here you will take this line again through there and you will turn it around that twisted section once you pull that and you pull your main line this is much easier with fishing line but as you can see it tightens in upon itself and uh, that is the knot that you use to tie your swivels with okay I'm going to show you that again the magic might be wearing off by now because it's just no longer beginning to look like a swivel but it is a swivel okay so line through the end of your swivel you twist the line upon itself four or five times take the tip of your line put it through the hoop that's formed at the bottom you see the twisted end you bring your line you put it through this loop over here let me just make sure you see that put it through the loop over there you turn it around the twisted end once, you pull and you pull. There you go. Now with fishing line, you want to use a lubricant. That lubricant you can buy anywhere. In fact, it's available for free. It's called spit. Regular old human spit. The best uh, lubricant for making knots with fishing line. Okay, now I'm going to be teaching you the last knot that you need to know. Ladies and gentlemen, honestly, they, these are the four knots you need to know. You do not need to know any other knots. Once you've mastered these knots, you will find your, li your life becomes incredible uh, in terms of fishing. I do need to mention one thing. Please, do not expect to get these knots absolutely perfect on your first try. Not even after your 10th try, not even after your 20th. It's going to take time, it's going to take practice. I've made, I've actually tried to calculate how many rigs I've made since I've really gotten serious about fishing. Um, I'm at, including this year's uh, rigs that I've made, I'm at about 600 and I still get knots wrong so granted um, I'm not exactly the most dexterous or the most intelligent so uh, you might pick it up a hell of a lot faster than I did um, but yes on to the next knot and this knot is the knot that you're going to be using to tie your leader line onto your main line your leader line take that and you fold it double in upon itself you take your fingers you hook it around your finger and you make a set of rabbit ears 
All right. This is the line. There you go. You make a set of rabbit ears and you close those rabbit ears up so that you've got your line doing this section. Now you take your thin line. That's not my cat. That is a stray cat that my wife adopted. She feeds him and um, okay, I have to admit I feed him too. But please ignore him for the time being because my wife's going to be feeding him in a few seconds. Back to this knot. I'm going to start over again. Your leader line, you fall double in and upon itself. You open up the loop using your index and thumb. You hook it around your index and you make a set of rabbit ears. There again, rabbit ears. And you fold those rabbit ears flat. You take your thin line, which is your main line, push it through this hoop. And then you pull tight on your thick line, your leader line. So you've got something like that happening. So you can see that. Then you take your thin line and you wrap it around your thick line. Depending on the thickness, you'll go three, four, five times. You'll put it through this hoop at the back here. You're going to have to keep your finger there. You put it through there. You pull that and you pull that and it's a lot neater with fishing line but as you can see that's <laughs> damn <laughs> actually that's nice that's good to remember <laughs> right there you go and that will tie it on that's yeah this is usually a lot it is a lot neater with fishing line it's also incredibly small so um you will be able to fish with that it will pass through the eyes of your rod without causing any issues and uh, there you go so i'm going to try to undo this because i don't want to cut this rope i really use it often and lots so that i can show you that again oh okay maybe i just figured that out hmm, awesome okay we're going to do this again you take your thick line, your leader line, you fold it double upon itself, index and thumb through the hoop there, hook around your index. All right, make a pair of rabbit ears. There you go, rabbit ears. Fold it flat so that you've got that section flailing in and upon itself. Take your thin line, your thin line goes through there. All right, and you pull on your thick line. Your leader line, you pull on that. You wrap your thin line a couple of times around your leader line. Please ignore the cat. You wrap that around while keeping a loop over there. Again, three, four, five times. And you push it through the loop that you formed. You pull that and you pull on the back section of your line. And again, that makes that makes a knot that is absolutely not going to go anywhere, right? Now, when you've done this, you're going to be cutting that and cutting that. Obviously, I'm not going to be doing that here. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, this was an episode on all four of the knots that you need to know in order to go fishing. Um, our next episode, we're going to be starting... To do what well, we're going to start doing the rigs um, we're going to do the rigs episodes in uh, two parts the first part will be the one type of rig the other part will be the other type of rig um, sorry I keep using the word rig but other people will call it a trace mm, excuse me um, in Afrikaans we refer to it as strop so um, Please excuse me when I keep referring to it as a rig. To me, it's always been a rig. Other people will lambaste me for that and say, no, it's a trace. Um, that then is uh, the episode on knots. Again, it is all you need to know. Um, remarkable, isn't it? <laughs> I will see you in the next episode, guys. Ladies, ciao.